We move now to the amendment at item 48, and I call Mrs. Andrea Minichiello Williams to speak both to her amendment at item 48, to speak to her amendment at item 48 and um, at item 50, uh, but just to move her amendment at item 48 for the moment. Thank you. Mrs. Williams, the speech limit is five minutes. Thank you. Andrea Williams, Chichester 286. Most humbly and with great respect, I would like to ask His Grace the Archbishop of York how naming the gospel at the heart of this motion is a prickly thing. The great and glorious news is that as Christians we understand and completely the notion of the common good. The Bishop of Southwark is quite right when he says that as Christians we understand and have something to say about social and political theology. At her coronation oath 64 years ago, our Queen Elizabeth was presented with a Bible by the Archbishop of Canterbury. She was there asked this, Will you, to the utmost of your power, maintain the laws of God and the true profession of the gospel? Will you maintain and preserve inviolably the settlement of the Church of England, the laws and the disciplines therein? Our gracious Queen, to keep your majesty ever mindful of the law and the gospel of God as the rule for the whole life and government of Christian princes, we present you with this book, the Bible, the most valuable thing that this world affords. Here is wisdom, royal law. These are the lively oracles of God. What is the gospel that the queen and her bishops are called to uphold? It is the kingdom of God, the good news which extends its reach throughout all human history and to which all are subject, to which our government is subject, and which has marked out the great history of our nation and our institutions in education, in health, in charity, in industry, in law, in finance. And it is why our systems, rooted in the gospel, are copied across the world. Since then, 1967, 50 years ago, we have passed laws which have meant that we've not protected the most vulnerable of citizens in our nation. The Abortion Act means that in 50 years, we have aborted 9 million of our citizens. That is one-seventh of our population. The most vulnerable place for a person to be in this nation at this time is in the mother's womb. Since the 1960s, we've had a sexual revolution where sex became recreational and not procreational. And with that, we've seen a rise in pornography. We've seen a rise in sexually transmitted diseases. We've seen not freedom, but slavery. And so the beautiful picture of marriage, one man and woman, and children to be raised within that construct is a beautiful picture to be presented. And since then, we've also seen, just in recent days, how uh, Christian preachers um, have been brought to court for preaching the kind of things that I've just said now, how nursing students for believing that life is beautiful and precious and to be protected from the moment of conception actually are taken off their courses. Social workers who believe that children need mothers and fathers are also removed from university courses or lose their jobs and are pushed on. That's why freedom is so important. And so again, with the greatest of respect, your grace, the Archbishop of York, to put the gospel at the heart of a message to the nation on the political good, on the common good, is what we should do for the Bible sets out how now to live in a world that is lost and is hurting. I call on the Archbishop of York to respond. Again, to use my old um, imagery, some more bubbles have appeared in, on the Christmas tree, some with varying abilities, some with great difficulty. On uh, number 50, 
There are many things there that one wouldn't want to disagree with really, but in order to give a full response requires very well detailed argument. So what I'm going to say, this actually in my book doesn't seem to add anything as far as I understand to the motion we're trying to do today. And then 48, which restricts the language of common good purely into the Bible. There are many traditions that have got a concept of common good. And you know the real joy of the Church of England is what the Queen said at Lambeth Palace uh, at the beginning of her um, Diamond Jubilee. She said that our Church of England is often, um, you know, not only misunderstood but also misappreciated. Its role is not to defend the Church of England but to serve the whole community. If you're going to be serving the whole community, please don't limit our language. I want to moan like yes moaned. The word became flesh, and sadly, we are now making it word and word and word again. Resist the amendments. <laughs>